I should say that I loved writing this chapter. I've got two of my own children. I've got a two-year-old and an eight-year-old. And uh, this was just an incredibly meaningful part of the work, which was to take the model that I've articulated earlier on, the, the showing up, the stepping out, the walking your why and moving on, and looking at how that applies in raising children. So a couple of examples or a couple of key principles. The first is that we know that being seen is just so incredibly important to children. And what I mean by being seen is your child comes home from school and is upset because no one would play with them and they are sad and they are experiencing that sadness. And yet so often with the best of intentions, we don't see or don't want to see because it's difficult for us as parents to see the heartache that that child is experiencing. And so often what we do is we try to go to solution to make nice. In effect, what we teach our children to do is to bottle. So we might do things like say to a child, um, no one would play with you at school. I'm so sorry. I'll play with you. Why don't we go bake cupcakes together? Okay, it's done with the best of intentions. I've done it. I'm guilty as charged. But what we do when we have that kind of interaction is we are encouraging our children to simply gloss over their emotional experience and they are not being seen. Now, what's critical is earlier in the interview, I spoke about the development of meta emotion skills, the ability to rise above your emotions and thoughts and to see them for what they are, they emotions and thoughts. So we then ask the question, how do we start developing that skill in children? The answer is that children are only able to recognize that emotions pass if they are allowed to feel their emotions. You only start realizing that you are more upset about something than everyone else in the boardroom if you, with your children and as a child, are allowed to experience an emotion and recognize that you're really upset about this, but none of your other five-year-old friends are, okay? So one of the first things that's really important in parenting is to be able to show up to your children's emotions and to help them to show up to their emotions because that helps children to actually develop this meta emotion skill of recognizing that emotions pass. Now, critically important, I don't mean dwelling on, ruminating, uh, brooding on emotion. I mean helping children to see their emotions, to label their emotions, and for the child to start to develop a sense of, if I do A, I will feel better. If I do B, I will feel worse, rather than the parent trying to make things right for the child. You talk about uh, autonomy, and one of the ones you say, for example, is you say minimize external rewards such as stickers, toys, sweets, or the cachet f f uh, for doing things. So, you know, how, how do you build or, or create or autonomous children? So autonomy is, I think, one of the most critical concepts, not just for children, but for individuals and organizations, yeah. okay? It's the idea as an individual that your actions are driven by something that you believe in and truly hold to be important. Um, and in the exact same way as in organizations, just telling people to believe in the strategy because you tell them to, uh, doesn't allow for or engage in autonomous action. The same applies in children. Uh, we have become highly extrinsically motivated and we use many extrinsic motivators in society. We give people and children in particular, we might give them Smarties or M&Ms because they pee in a potty or we have multiple sticker charts and everything lands up being about checks and measures and um, external. And there is a massive body of research showing that children who do better in life are children who are able to start discerning what is important to them. 
their own sense of pride because I peed in the potty as an example as opposed to I'm just doing it for the money or for the M&Ms. So in the book, one of the things that I talk about is ways that we can encourage autonomy in our children. Um, and I give some examples around minimizing extrinsic reward, um, being able to give a rationale. There are times where you say to a child, you have to hold my hand when we cross the street. Okay, there are times where there is no choice. When there is no choice, accompanying the no choice with a thought out rationale hold my hand when we cross the street because people will be able to see me and they can't see you, that is autonomy encouraging. The exact same in organizations, you cannot tell people to simply believe in something because you as the boss told them to. There are going to be times when there are changes in policy or changes in strategy that just are. And the way that we encourage autonomy in that context is by helping people to understand truly understand the rationale that underpins the decision. Perfect. So it's about getting them to understand the logic. It's not, not just following for conformity's sake. Um, you, you talk about your, your, your son being on a diving board at one point and having that freeze, sort of frozen moment on the diving board, having to face their fears. And, and I've, I, I've just sort of with some of my friends that are growing up in the same sort of you know, kids as I've got, um, I've seen some, some uh, you know, fathers and, and mothers all force their kids down the, the slide and they're scared, they're scared the pants off them. Others sort of you know, just allow their kids to walk away and then just, you know, they don't have to go down because mommy and daddy's not going to push them down it. How, how do you handle that diving board moment? I mean, do you, <laughs> should you be pushing the kids down the slides into the pool? So let me just say that I am by no means perfect with this. Um, I, I give some examples in the book of times when I've slipped up. But I am very often having conversations with my children about what is your why? What is important to you? Not just because I want you to get off the diving board or I want you to do X, Y, or Z. Yeah. What is important to you? And with that example that I give about my child being really fearful, I could very easily have said to him, just dive, it'll be okay. Mm. Or, poor thing, you don't want to dive, it's fine, you don't have to. But either one of those things would have been non-emotionally agility supportive. It, it would not have cultivated emotional agility. To force a child to do something just because you want them to do it does not encourage them to get a sense of why something is important for themselves or to harness their own sense of strength and skill. But by the same token, simply giving them an easy out sends them the message that sometimes things are important to them but they can just bow out. So the conversation that I was having with my child and that I try to have with my children often is why is this thing important to you? Why is diving off the diving board important to you? And how can you have a choice point, how can you move to what, towards what is important to you, even if you feel scared? One of the things that I talk about in the book is that when people talk about courage, they talk about crushing your fear. You know, this idea of managing your fear or crushing your fear. And one of the things that I propose in the book is, again, we don't need to manage our fear or wrestle with our fear. Our fear just is, it's human. So courage is not about the absence of fear. Courage is fear walking. What I mean here is that courage is not about pushing fear aside or pretending that your fear doesn't exist. Courage is about being able to hold your fear and still walk towards what is important to you. Yeah. And the example of the diving board was exactly that context. Can you be scared and still jump? Because that is sometimes what we need to be able to learn to do in life and work. Yeah, you, you, you talk about the whole thing about is, you know, you've got to uh, choose 
courage over uh, comfort and, and that's essential and you know no matter what age but what age talk about age appropriate what age can you start having conversations with your kids about feeling the fear and doing it anyway so I think the conversations can start really early and they they start actually with the conversations about what fear is in other words helping children to recognize their emotions and their own sense of autonomy so a, a very, very young example of this is that when you've got a baby and you are having a conversation with your baby and your baby might even be only six months old, um, simply being able to recognize and verbalize you're feeling sad, you feel, you, you know, so starting to help the child get language around emotions is very, very important. Um, it's, it's in fact one of the most critical emotional agility skills that we can develop, being able to label our own emotional experience. Um, but from a very, very young age, from around the age of um, 18 months to two years old, one can start having conversations with children around their emotions. For example, if your child is upset, mm about whatever. A very common response is what we call minimizing. Minimizing is, oh, don't be upset, it'll be okay. Again, done with the best of, in, of intentions, and I'm guilty of this, but what that is called is, is it's minimizing. It's basically saying to the child, you're feeling something, but there's no need for you to feel it, okay? And the research shows that that actually impacts on the child's ability to develop these kinds of emotional skills later on in life. So from a practical perspective from a very very young age we want to start having conversations with are you feeling sad or disappointed so helping children to discern what their emotion is or are you feeling sad or mad you know again depending on the age of the child um, again at very very young age we know that children can start articulating what will help them to feel better so instead of you running in and trying to make things right, Sophie, that's my daughter's name, I can see you really sad about the fact that you can't do X or Y. What would help you in this situation? Do you want some time to yourself? Would you, would you want mommy to read you a book? Should we go for a walk together? My child is two years old and she can tell me which of those things would be most helpful to her. So what we want to start doing is, is at that very young age, helping children to develop language around emotions and also helping children to develop what we call emotional self-efficacy. And that is the idea that I can exert some choice in this situation and that my choice matters. Right, so never underestimate the little ones on uh, coming up with their own solutions, even at the age of two. Yeah, at, at a very young age, you, can, you might offer them a range of solutions and ask them to choose, whereas at an older age, the child can offer their own solutions. Yeah. Do you think things like, um, I mean, all kids are going to feel fear and anger and excitement and happiness and the whole range of emotions, but do you think the whole thing about the courage quotient is that? Because you talk about sort of you know, choosing courage, not, not comfort. And uh, do you think that is some kids are just born courageous or do you think you can lead them to, to, to be more courageous over their childhood and then into adult years? There, there's definitely personality predisposition around people's sense of uh, risk taking, for example. This is, uh, you know, clear in the research. But again, I think that one of the things that I love and find so passionate about the idea of emotional agility is that it doesn't matter who you are, you are able to develop a sense of choice as to what it is that is important to you and move towards that. And that might be regardless of your baseline level of courage around that particular activity. If it's important, can you walk towards the thing that matters? Perfect. And I suppose as we as adults, role play, sorry, not role play, um, modeling is absolutely essential, isn't it? That's the, that's the key thing for our little kids growing up is that we are actually being the emotional intelligent people and parents we want to be. 
Correct. That that what you're doing in this context is you are showing up to your children, you also being able to step out of and not be hooked by sometimes the emotions you might experience with them. That you're able to show them how you operate from a sense of what's important and values based to you and even articulate them. Yeah. Articulate those values to your children and then show them how you take action in ways that are concordant with that.